Ruskin Bond wished to see a tiger in its natural habitat. His friend, Mr. Kishore, drove him out to his rest house in the middle of the forest and promised to come back in two days. The caretaker of the house, Bhag Singh, was a retired Indian Army corporal. He brought a cup of tea for Bond. Bhag Singh inquired if Ruskin Bond had been there to see animals. Bond told him that he was there to watch the animals in the natural habitat as he looked around the clearing in front of the house where a farmyard chicken scrabbled in the dust. He inquired whether he will have to go far to see animals. Bhag Singh told him that the rest house was the best place to see the wild animals as it was about 50 yards from a river street where animals came to drink water at night. He told Bond that he could sit in the veranda with a cup of tea. But to see the animals, Bond had to be very quiet. Bond further inquired if he would be fortunate enough to see a tiger as he had visited the place to see a tiger. With a tolerant smile, the caretaker told him that the tiger would do his best. Bond had his lunch and spent his afternoon reading Love Among the Chickens, written by a famous humor writer, Woodhouse. A peacock flaunted its tail feathers on the lawn, but Bond showed no interest as he had already seen many peacocks. At night, Bond sat down in an old game chair in the veranda. The caretaker brought him dinner on a brass thali with two different vegetables in separate katoris. Hot chapatis were brought by the caretaker's 10-year-old son in relays, hot from the kitchen. After dinner, Bond had a cup of tea and then he began his vigil. After an hour, Bhag Singh's family went to sleep in their outhouse. Their stray dog barked at Bond for half an hour before he too fell asleep. The stream could be seen clearly under the moonlight. And then he heard a strange sound, a crescendo of noise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. From the muddy banks near the stream filling the night air. All the frogs in the jungle seemed to have gathered for having a sort of old boys reunion. They chattered for an hour and then silence filled the night. A jackal sneaked across the clearing. Bond was almost asleep when a cicada started making shrill noise. Bond stared at the stream but no animals came. The next evening, Bhag Singh sat with Bond and placed a charcoal burner on the veranda to prepare tea. He told Bond that he would offer tea to him whenever Bond felt sleepy. They heard some sound from the forest, but they were not sure if it was a panther or someone sawing wood. The sounds were similar in the distance. The frogs started making noise again. This time, it seemed like a general conversation, exactly like a chatter of a cocktail party. By morning, Bond had drunk over 15 cups of tea. Bhag Singh made an English breakfast, toast, fried eggs and tea. On the third night, Bhag Singh's son too stayed awake with them and drank his quota of tea. However, no animals showed up at the stream. The next morning, Mr. Kishore came to the rest house in his jeep. He asked Bond if any animals were spotted near the house. Bond told him about the jackal. Mr. Kishore consoled him and told that he would have a better luck next time. The jungles were not what they used to be. Bond bid farewell to Bhagse and got into the jeep. 
barely a hundred yards had gone when Mr. Kishore stopped the speed suddenly. Bond and Mr. Kishore were surprised to see a magnificent full-grown tiger standing before them, right in the middle of the road. The tiger did not roll or snarl. He just gave a disdainful look at them and walked majestically across the road and into the jungle. Mr. Kishore happily told Bond that he could not complain anymore because he had seen the tiger. Bond told him how he had to wait for three sleepless nights to see the tiger. But he finally saw it in broad daylight. Mr. Kishore realized that Bond was tired as he had not slept for three days. Mr. Kishore then offered to get him a nice cup of tea. Bond recalled a quote from Malcolm Muggeridge who had said that the only real Englishmen left in the world were to be found in India.